All right, welcome to The Robert Show. We are here at IBM Think 2024. I'm super excited to host Sonia Mazetta, Director of Watson X Data Product Management. Sonia, welcome to The Robert Show. Thank and you. welcome to IBM Think. Thank you very much, thank you for having me. It is such a pleasure to chat with you today. I know we met uh, yesterday at the reception and uh, exchanged a few words, but today we're going to get into everything around what's in X data, and uh, I know there, there's a talk that you're going to do tomorrow. Yes. So I'm kind of excited about that, uh, uh, but just for audience, would you like to quickly introduce yourself, tell us what you do at What's Index uh, Absolutely, data. thank yeah. you. So I'm Sonia Mazetta, as you probably highlighted. I am the director of What's Index Data in product management. So just to give you a little bit of background as to who I am, I'm also a data architect that turned into a product manager. So very excited to be here today. That's awesome, and uh, being a data architect, I'm pretty sure uh, you know the nuances of you know the engineering as well, and uh, you've worked in the space for quite a bit. So I'm, uh, you know, I'll just jump right in. Uh, what are the key steps to ensure a solid data foundation? Because we've been talking a lot around Gen AI. We've been listening a lot of uh, different things when it comes to Gen AI, but. Talking about the solid data foundation is something I'm pretty sure our audience would also love to know from you. What do you think, how does it work? So I'm going to keep it very high level and I'm going to simplify it. I'm going to say there's three things that are very important. So number one, I would say is unify your data. So you have to really focus on addressing data silos, right? Yes. Simplify your data landscape. Number two, data governance. So at the end of the day, you have to be able to trust the data that you are using, especially when it comes to AI. And number three, data sharing. So once you have your data nicely unified, it's governed, you can trust it, you have to enable it to be shared across the board, across diverse AI use cases. Okay, those are three uh, definitely very important points and uh, thanks for sharing those. Uh, also quickly, uh, wanted to jump a little on you know the real time data as well because when we talk about data it kind of uh, we there are a lot of things that kind of come into the game and real time data is one of the important things so how does real time data access enhance gen ai models uh, do you have any thoughts around that so i think the best way to describe why it's important is essentially by saying it's it's what could set you apart from a competitive standpoint, right? right? So having real-time data and the latest and greatest in terms of insights to make quick decisions, especially business decisions that can lead to profitable business outcomes is essentially why real-time data is important. Absolutely. 100%, and uh, that brings me to another, just a follow-up question there in terms of, you know, when you talk about real-time data, what best practices do you recommend securing AI training practices there? Uh, are there any thoughts that you have? So I, I'm going to bring it back to the second point, which was data governance, right. right? So you have to really think about what data you're using as part of your training. So do you have sensitive data, right? Uh, sensitive data has to be handled accordingly. You have to protect it. You have to be able to mask it, encrypt it, do whatever is necessary to ensure that only those that have access to it should have access to it. Mm. The other thing is really to make sure that the quality of the data that you're using is reliable, right? You're using it to train, you want to make sure you rely on it and it's you know, something that you trust. And the last I would say is to make sure that you can track an audit trail, right? So who has access to this data? What have they done to this data that now you're using? Mm. Understand that history to understand at the end of the day, you know, how to leverage that as part of your training. Yeah. I think those are definitely great points and uh, thanks for sharing all those insights. Uh, do you have any use case that you would like to share? Anything that you've been, because Think is like one of the biggest conferences uh, for IBM and uh, I see like almost 2,500 plus accounts actually do come here uh, at this point in time. Do you have any use cases that you would like to share or anything that you've been hearing a lot from your uh, you know, clients as well? 
Well, at the end of the day, there's a diverse set of use cases, use cases. that you can really focus yeah. on when it comes to that. But cybersecurity comes to mind, right? Cybersecurity right. is critical. It relies on high quality data. It relies on real time data, right? So that you can make decisions and you can ensure that you know there's no threats involved. And if there are threats, that you can address them immediately. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, thanks for sharing that. Also, since we are on this topic of uh, what's the next data, I definitely want to learn more about how does what's the next data help optimize AI workloads for cost and performance, because that's one of the key things for a lot of enterprise leaders as, the, as well, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So I think the best way to think about it is we offer options, we're flexible in terms of the approach, and the way we do that is by creating a multiple fit for purpose engines approach. Uh -huh. So what does that mean? We have diverse engines that are optimized either for read performance or write performance. And we have really have invested a lot of time to focus on ensuring that the data management is optimized. So from a price perspective, that is one of our key drivers to ensure that when you're executing your data processing or your data querying, that optimization is a part of that. Okay, that's uh, pretty interesting and uh, definitely uh, something must. Uh, so. Quickly also, uh, since we are on this topic of uh, enterprises and organizations, how can organizations maximize the potential of their proprietary data with what's in X data? Kind of curious to know a little about that. Absolutely. So I would say that um, the best way to think about it is you can unleash your data. And when I say unleash the data, make it more accessible so that it could be used for AI. Right. One way that Watson X that data does that is by enabling easy access to the data by using an open table format, which is Iceberg. So Iceberg is something that has been widely adopted today across the industry. Right. And it really makes data interoperable, right? Any vendor that has adopted Iceberg as their primary open table format can easily share it, use it, and you know, be able to use it for the AI pipelines. More openness is what we're seeing in this space as well. So that's pretty interesting and thanks for sharing that. Uh, also, since uh, we are here, I'm pretty sure there's, you know, obviously you meet a lot of customers, but there's also a lot of talking about the future. So I'm kind of curious to know a little about what future advancements do you see in data management and AI? And how is IBM preparing for that? 100%. So, let me start off by saying that there is no AI without data, data. right? Wow. <laughs> so when we talk about the importance of data, it is critical when it comes to the success of AI. But if you flip it on the other side, AI itself can also contribute to accelerate the quality of data management. Where I see the future headed in terms of you know, technologies is I see a lot more AI being infused into data governance, into data management to accelerate the trust, to accelerate the quality, to better understand maybe some of the data patterns that it's you know managing and dealing with to help make better informed decisions when it comes to data governance and data management. This is amazing. In terms of, uh uh, I'm pretty sure our audience would have like a lot more questions for you. So if they want to reach out to you, which is the best place, is LinkedIn a best place or, and also, you know, all the announcements and, you know, the great um, uh, resources that IBM have, uh, where can they find it? Please come visit me on my LinkedIn page. I'm accessible, you can reach out to me, you can send me emails. If you have any questions in terms of the announcements, please feel free to reach out. Okay, one last question for today is, I know you have a talk tomorrow. Would yes. you like to share a little about that? What can we expect from the talk? I don't want to obviously get the secret sauce, but yeah, I'm pretty sure this will go out after your talk. For so sure. it's uh, the talk is tomorrow. It's all about managing and trusting and delivering data for use in AI. And some of the key points that we're really focused on are some of the things we actually talked about today, yes. which is really all about data unification. It's all about data governance and it's about data sharing, and most importantly, how to optimize your data workload so that you can have price performance. Wow, I love it. This was great, Sonia. Uh, thanks for doing this, thanks for taking the time out. Thank you for all the best me. for uh, you know, all the great insights that you've shared, uh, and I'm pretty sure our audience would definitely would love to reach out to you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.